Welcome students to lesson one of the urban world topic. In this topic we will be looking at cities, what they are, how they form, why people live in cities and what challenges they face. I'm going to take you on a journey around the world so that we will look at cities not just in high income countries but also in newly emerging economies as well. And we will link this topic to other topics that we've learned, like the living world topic, natural hazards, and the development topic, so that you understand how cities play an important role in geography. In this lesson, I will be introducing the idea of what a city is and what life is like there. Please write the date, title, and learning objective, and have a pen and paper ready to learn. Okay, time to review prior learning. Please write once 10. Answer the questions from memory and then mark your answers. Game time. Number one. Edwin Chadwick helped improve the health of people in London by advising the government to build underground sewers and toilets in homes. Two. Quality of life means how happy, comfortable and healthy people are in their lives. Three. What word means that some people have more of something than others? Inequality. Four. A tariff increases the price of imports and therefore reduces demand. What is a tariff an example of? It's a trade barrier. 5. The stage of the DTM with the highest natural increase is stage 2, because the birth rate and death rate have the biggest difference between them. Three, uh, 6. The replacement of manual labour with machines is called mechanisation. 7. The type of aid in which countries give money to expert organisations like the World Bank is called multilateral aid. 8. What type of aid is most vulnerable to government corruption? It is usually bilateral aid. 9. What percent of Jamaica's GDP comes from tourism? It's about 30%. 10. Malaysia has a diverse or diversified economy, which means it gains revenue from many different economic activities. Give yourselves a mark out of 10. If you got 8 or more, excellent. Please write any questions you got wrong and their answers and then test yourselves on them repeatedly. To introduce the idea of cities, I'm going to show you a photo and some questions next to it. Please use your understanding to try and answer these questions. Go for it. Here's the photo. This is Tokyo, the capital city of Japan. So number one, what type of country is Japan? Well, if you've watched my lessons on the development topic, you will know that Japan is an HIC, a high income country. It is one of the richest countries in the world. In the corner of this photo, you will see Mount Fuji, a volcano, and you will also notice from this photo that the city of Tokyo is vast. Why might Tokyo have got so big? Well, let's see how much you know about cities already. But you could have said that Tokyo has got so big because lots of people have moved there or migrated there. You may have also said that lots of children have been born there over the years and consequently the population has grown. If you were really advanced, you may have talked about the advantages of living there, which attracted people there. Three, what may be the benefits of living in Tokyo instead of, say, living in a smaller city or living in the countryside? Well, you could have said that there are better high paid jobs there. There are better services there, such as universities and schools and public transport and healthcare. There are also better, more opportunities for young people, such as entertainment and shopping. All of these are benefits of living in Tokyo. If you want to start a business, it's easier in Tokyo as well. There are more banks there and more educated people there to work with. For what problems might you experience if you lived in a big city like Tokyo? Well, you could have said that air pollution might be higher from all the vehicles. You may have said that it's more stressful because of the sheer number of people that live there. You might have said that house prices are really expensive because everyone wants to live there. You may also have said that crime might be higher than in the countryside. These are all elements of living in Tokyo that might not be so good. In this lesson, we're going to explore two questions. First of all, what a city is and the different types. And second question, what are the pros and cons of living in a city? And I'm going to give you the example of London, the capital city of the UK. So here we go. What is a city? Well, you may have heard this term you may have known it for a very long time. But in fact, there is no strict definition for a city. 
a city is just considered to be a very important settlement where people live. Important in terms of its economic value, how much money it makes, or its political value because the government of a country might be there, or some other reason. But a city is an important settlement, which means a place where people live in a country. Cities can be very small or very large. For example, Oxford on the left has only 150,000 people. Tokyo has a population of almost 30 million people. Tokyo is what we call a mega city. It has a population of more than 10 million people. Most of the world's mega cities are located in Asia, in countries such as China and India. The biggest city in the world, Tokyo, is in Japan. A few mega cities are located in African countries, such as Nigeria and South Africa. And much fewer mega cities are located in HICs, such as those in North America and in Europe. Most of the world's mega cities, these massive cities, are located in NEEs. So cities can be big or small. Cities can also be like this or like this. Poor or rich. This is Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, and this is London in the UK. Some parts of Rio de Janeiro look like this. They're very poor. Some parts of London look like this. This is Mayfair in London, one of the richest parts of any city in the world. Extraordinarily rich people, incredibly expensive houses, and luxury shops. So cities don't just have to be rich everywhere. They can be poor. So a city is an important settlement in a country. More important than a town usually with a bigger population than a town, but not always. There are some towns in England that have bigger population than some cities. The key idea about a city is that it's important. It's densely populated, so lots of people live in a fairly small space. Okay, so if that's what a city is, how do they form, and what's life like there? What is life like in cities? I'm going to show you the example of London and my own experience with London, having lived there, to tell you about the pros and cons of living in a city. Well, the first thing you need to know are the good things about cities. This is the reason why people move to them. The first positive of cities is an economic reason. Many of the jobs that are available in a country are in cities. In particular, many of the best and best paid jobs involving the highest skills and education are only available in cities. Think of jobs in high-tech companies like Apple or the BBC in the UK. Jobs involving filming or computers or manufacturing. These are almost always in cities. So you can make more money as a person or part of a business if you live in a city. There are also social benefits to living in a city. This is partly why I went to live there. I was a student in London for many years, and I went there because cities often have the best education and the best universities. Cities tend to grow around universities because universities attract highly skilled people who then go on to work in highly paid jobs. So I was attracted by this in London. Additionally, London also has a great social life, both at night and in the day. There are lots of parks you can go to, nightclubs, bars, restaurants. There are lots of shopping centres. You can go on lovely walks. There's lots of entertainment. The social opportunities in cities are best, especially in the capital cities like London and Tokyo. Additionally, healthcare is typically best in cities. Some of the UK's best hospitals with the highest trained doctors and most advanced equipment for solving and curing the most challenging illnesses are in the biggest cities, especially London. I thankfully never had such a negative experience, but many people who do go to London's hospitals to be treated. Additionally, transport in cities is usually the best. London has its underground system, which was built in the 19th century, but now has a network of many different lines that go all around the city, making it very easy to get from place to place, even though London is vast. So you can go from one end of London to the other in under an hour. Investment in transport in cities is usually the best. And that's the main way that people get around. Finally, there are environmental perks as well. Regent's Park in London, Hyde Park, Richmond Park. These are all wonderful green spaces available in cities like London, which allow you to relax, allow you to go for runs, allow you to meet people, allow you to reduce your stress. 
And because the cities tend to be the richest parts of countries, because of the jobs they have and the taxes that go to governments, they tend to have the most investment in environmentally sustainable technologies such as electric buses or charging points for electric cars or solar panels. And consequently, cities often do a lot to protect the environment. However, in every city there are challenges, no matter which one you're in. And in London, this is no exception. And the challenges in cities come from two main sources. The first one is population growth. When the number of people in a city grows, it becomes harder for a government to deal with those people to manage their needs. Consider a school. If suddenly there are lots more people, then that school will have not enough spaces to have all those students. And so, a student might have a worse educational experience if the class size gets bigger. Or the school might say it simply has no more space for them. Population growth also leads to other issues. This is a principal problem because often if the population grows to too fast, then the government doesn't have enough money or enough time to invest in the services such as transport and health and education and jobs that people need to be able to have a good life in cities. So the main problems in cities come from too rapid population growth and a lack of government investment in the things that people need. The consequence of this in a city like London is that there are economic challenges, principally inequality between people. In London, as in every city in the world, some people are very rich, others are much poorer. Some people own businesses or work in banks or are sportsmen or sportswomen and make enormous salaries and incomes every year. Others work in the tertiary sector as, for example, cleaners or other jobs that pay much less well because they have a lower education. Consequently, you have inequality. Inequality also leads to crime. Crime because some people are desperate for money because they may be unemployed, not have a job. Crime rates in cities tend to be higher than crime rates in rural areas in the countryside for this reason, because there are more opportunities to commit crime. There are more shops where you can steal things from, more people where you can steal things more from, more people who are poor and desperate for money. Additionally, there are social challenges. Because of the high population, it can be a struggle to get an education sometimes in cities if you have an overcrowded school. If the government doesn't invest sufficiently, then you have many children who go without education. Finally, if the population grows too fast, then hospitals get overcrowded in cities. As you will discover throughout this topic, these two problems affect NEE cities and LIC cities much more than HIC cities for the simple reason that governments have less money and the populations grow faster. And finally, cities are major sources of environmental problems. There are so many people, meaning there are more cars as people try to travel to work. This releases more air, air pollution, leading to a bigger contribution by cities to global warming because they produce more CO2. Additionally, harmful chemicals from cars, such as nitrogen dioxide, harm people's health and cause them asthma and lung disease. More people die from air pollution in cities than in rural areas. Because of the large population and population growth, if there's a lack of investment, then enormous amounts of waste are produced by cities, which go into vast mountains of waste called landfills. When it rains, some of the chemicals in these landfills may go into the soil and into water, leading to polluted water, damaging ecosystems and harming people's health. So you see that life in cities depends on how fast the population grows and how well the government invests in the services that people need. Okay, time to assess learning. Why do you think population growth is higher in NEE cities than in HIC cities? Well, you could have said two possible reasons. Number one, the quality of life in NEEs in rural areas is very low often. And so people move to cities because they think the quality of life will be better, better schools, better hospitals. Whereas in HICs, quality of life in rural areas is actually not bad. There are still hospitals, there are still schools, 
There are still basic services such as internet and clean water, so people don't feel the same need to move. Additionally, you may have said that in NEEs, the birth rate is higher because there's less contraception. Additionally, natural increase is higher. Consequently, the population grows faster in NEE cities than in HIC cities. Question two. How might you reduce some of the environmental problems in cities? If you recall, in the development topic, we looked at Lagos in Nigeria. How might you reduce some of those problems? Well, you may have said that you could change the way people get transported around cities. Instead of taking cars, they could take bicycles or buses. Make them electric, even better. You may have said for the waste problem, cities should recycle more. Or they should have environmental laws in place so that if people pollute, either from a factory or a car, they get fined, so they're encouraged not to. And finally, why do you think most secondary and tertiary jobs are in cities? What's the benefit of being in a city for these jobs? Well, you could have said one of a few reasons. The first one being that there are lots of skilled people in cities, so that businesses would want to move and set up in a city because they need skilled employees to run the factories or to work in the offices. You may have also said that businesses want to set up near the customers. And since most customers live in cities, if you set up a business there, for example, a manufacturing business, then you don't have to transport your goods very far to be sold. OK, time to embed learning. Please answer these questions using what you've learned from the lesson and then mark your answers. Make sure that you add in green pen any corrections and give yourself a mark out of the total. Go for it. So number one, two reasons why cities and HICs have lower rates of population growth than any LICs or NEs. So any two of these reasons, make sure that you've worded it similar to how I have and use keywords like natural increase, rural urban migration, quality of life. Make sure you use the phrases rural and urban. Two, one reason why secondary and tertiary jobs are usually found in cities. Any of these. Better infrastructure, which is needed for businesses. Key point. Remember how Shell and Unilever invested in infrastructure to make sure their manufacturing was easier? The Unilever factory in Nigeria needed clean water, so they invested in clean water pipes. Skilled people in cities. And finally, people are closer together. If you've done the changing economic world and the UK economy topic, you'll have looked at the lesson on science and business parks. If not, go to that lesson and watch it. And three, two ways that environmental issues in cities can be reduced. Any two of these points. Public transport. Services such as recycling. Discouraging cars using a congestion charge. You may not have known that one, but we will explain it later in this topic. Replacing old buildings rather than causing urban sprawl. Urban sprawl, if you remember from the Nigeria topic, is how cities spread outwards. So if you build on old buildings or replace old buildings instead of building outwards, you reduce deforestation. Give yourselves a mark out of 10. Make sure that you add any corrections in. Okay. From this lesson, write two questions from memory and then answer them. In a week's time, test yourself on those questions to see if you still understand it. If in the try part of this lesson you haven't done particularly well, then in a week's time, watch the explanations in this video again and then attempt the try questions again so that you can memorize them. Practice is everything. Thank you so much for joining me in this lesson. Next lesson, we're go I'm going to introduce you to an idea called urbanization, and I'm going to help you understand why the population around the world has grown so fast since about 1950. Join me then.